Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome back to our spoiler discussion for Return of the Dragon Emperor. Today we are here with the uh, so-called name drop of this cluster, Gil Lapis, Conqueror of Ataractia himself. He is our darkness and fire ruler and... Um, Kind of mixed feelings whatever about him as a ruler. He's definitely different from his previous ruler incarnation and whatnot, but we'll have a little look and see what he actually does. He's got kind of like a, a weird sort of mechanic sort of blending in Alisaris and a little bit of like Dark Alice as well, I think is the best way you could describe it. So we'll actually get in to see what he does. So obviously he is the darkness and fire ruler. His judgment costs at least Eight. It's one fire, one dark, and six void, but you may pay one void less to play this ability uh, to, for each card in your opponent's removed area. So, not your removed area, but your opponent's. He comes with energized, obviously, you produce dark or fire. He also has a zero cost ability, where if a target magic, uh, target non-magic stone card your opponent controls will be put into a graveyard this turn, remove it from the game instead. Play this ability only during your turn and only once per turn. So essentially, anything that isn't a magic stone that went into the graveyard um, during from your opponent's side of the field during your turn can then be put into the removed area, but you can only do it once. So essentially, I'm guessing if your opponent is playing uh, chance or whatnot, like counter chance, whatever, and then they hit the graveyard, you can say, okay, that's going to be removed, whatever. So like, I guess that would be good for stuff if it has remnant. So that way you can at least stop your opponent getting remnant and whatever. So that would be a good use of it. And obviously getting rid of uh, resonators if they've got some way to revive them and everything like that. But um, we'll actually just see what he actually does when we flip over and he becomes Galapis Rebel of Darkest Fires. Again, this artwork is looking swag as all heck. He is a wonder. He's a 1,000-1,000 wonderer. He has an ability, which costs zero again. You put target non-magic stone card from your opponent's removed area on the bottom of their deck. If you do, this card gains swiftness, precision, flying, or first strike until end of turn. Now, I find this, like, a really oddly worded ability. I need to double check with the spoiler article itself to see if they explain it here or whatever, because it gives it as an or. So, my, my thinking behind that would be that if, say, you put back one card, you would get swiftness. If you put back two cards, you get swiftness and precision. Like, I don't know whether you get to pick or choose which keywords you gain until end of turn or whether you have to do it from the start. So basically, you would have to get, uh, pay four or you'd have to do four uh, cards, whatever, to get all four abilities. Or whether you can pick and choose depending on, like, like I suppose, like, it's saying or. So it's not necessarily saying in the order of, but I, I would need to double check to make sure uh, how that ruling would go down. He also has an X ability where you may play a face-up card with total cost X or less from your opponent's removed area without paying its cost until end of turn. Play this ability only once per turn. Now it only says once per turn, so not necessarily just your turn, which I find really interesting. Also it says total cost X, so I'm guessing say your opponent had like a, you removed like a two cost spell or something like that. Let's say it's for, for talking sake, let's say it's Black Moon Beam, like of all things. So if that was in your opponent's removed area, obviously it's face up because it's saying it has to be face up card, uh, and you paid two, would you then be able to use that card, because it says without paying its cost, or uh, like say if it was a, uh, a Chan or like a Resonator that's not the, co like, not the color that you're running, so say it was like a blue thing or whatever, would you still be able to play it? Or is it, because it's just saying total cost X, and this doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean you need to have the colour requirement, it just says that you are paying X for the total cost of it. So I'm guessing you don't need to worry about colour fixing or whatnot, I'm not too sure, I would have to double check with that ruling. And then he has one last ability, which is pay fire and dark, put two target non-magic stone cards from your opponent's removed area on the bottom of their deck, if you do, destroy target resonator. So, all in all, that's his gimmick, you're removing cards that your opponent has from the graveyard, and then when you're flipping over, you're putting them to the bottom of their deck to punish them and whatnot, so... It's a interesting J Roller. It's nice to see that at least that they're all having different gimmicks and whatnot, considering that at least uh, two of them that we've seen so far, I believe, have pretty high um, flip costs and whatnot. So it is interesting to see how they actually whittle down their own costs and whatnot. Next up, we have his Magic Stone of the Ebon Home. A very interesting name for it. And I, I very like, uh, very like, I like the design of the stone very much. It's a very pleasing stone to look at. If your ruler isn't Gilapis Conqueror of Ataractia or Rebel of Darkest Fires, you have to pay 300 life for this to come in uh, unrested. Otherwise, you have to rest it. You treat this card as a fire magic stone and a darkness magic stone. And when this card enters your field, remove the top card of your opponent's deck from the game. 
Trisha's Fire and Dark Memories. Such an edgy stone. I quite like it. I think it's probably the best ability or whatever in order to support Gil and everything that he does. Next up, who saw this coming? Valentina, ousted out of Prissia's body, has now taken Shion's body. I guess, like, like um, I think people were saying that um, she had Shion's body basically trapped inside a memoria. And if you remember the shift resonator, uh, Prissia into Valentina from BFA, she was holding, like, the, the flip side or whatever, was holding some kind of red orb. People are theorizing that that red orb was actually a memoria of Shion and it held her body in it. So I guess she did technically die or she did, or passed out, at least, or whatever, and Valentina's just been hoarding her body in the off chance that she got ousted from Prissia and she needed a new body, or whatever. She's always one step ahead, because, like, at the bottom there, it's a good thing I planned ahead. She's just, like, she's one step ahead. I'm surprised she didn't possess Mushtar, but I'm guessing as soon as she left Prissia's body, she kind of, like, lost control of Mushtar at that point, and so she couldn't, like, take her, or whatever, or maybe Mushtar was freed from her control. But nonetheless, we'll go into the card, Valentina, the Twilight Passion. She is a 4 cost, 1 fire, 1 dark, and 2 void for 900, 900. She's a 12 apostle, which is quite interesting. She's gone back to being a 12 apostle type. If a resonator dealt damage by this card, this turn would be put into a graveyard and removed from the game instead. When this card enters your field, remove target resonator your opponent controls with total cost 2 or less from the game. So, I guess, the, well, I guess um, it would count Abdul, but because Abdul cancels enter abilities and whatnot, this wouldn't actually trigger, so that doesn't really actually affect it at all. She also has two uh, zero cost abilities. Put a target non-magic stone card from your opponent's removed area on the bottom of the deck. If you do, this card gains swiftness or precision until end of turn. And then if you put uh, three target non-magic stones from your opponent's removed area on the bottom of their deck, if you do, this card gains 500-500. So it's got the potential to become a 14-14, which is kinda scary. But uh, again, it also depends on how many cards you've managed to remove from your opponent's uh, graveyard at that point and whether or not you're willing to use the abilities for either Lapis or for Valentina, because obviously they've both got different effects. But I want them to release the full artwork or whatever, because I am dying to see the design of this outfit, because maybe I want to draw her in this outfit. I just want to, like, draw all the pretty Valentinas and everything like that. Next up, we have the Searing Dead, a three-cost fire, dark, and one void, 800-800 Zambi. We've got a return of Zambis. When this card enters your field, you may put target non-magic stone card from your opponent's removed area on the bottom of their deck. If you do, this card deals 400 damage to your target opponent. So again, another enter ability that is stopped by Abdul, sadly. But it is an interesting ability. Well, it's just a shame that for the three cost, it's an enter ability and not, say, when this card attacks or blocks or, like, whenever you tap this card or whatever. So... It's a bit of a hefty cost and whatnot, so I'm not too sure whether this would see too much play or anything like that. I mean, it's a very situational card. I mean, this whole Lapis deck is a bit of a situational deck to run anyway, but we'll see, we'll see. Next up is the Black Hole of the Spirit World. A 4 cost, 2 fire, and 2 uh, dark. It's an addition, obviously. Whenever a resonator is put into a graveyard from your field, your opponent banishes a resonator. See, out of all the cards here, I quite like this, but I feel like it's... um. It's not necessarily the best for Lapis. I feel like you could essentially splash this, maybe if you did Dark Alice Black Red, potentially. Like, this would be quite splashable in that, I think. So that um, that way you can make sure that your opponent has to get rid of their resonators or whatnot if they decide to attack you. And then, essentially, you could use Dark Alice's ability to remove stuff from their graveyard, which would be uh, quite a nice gimmick or whatever. It is a four cost, so... It is one of those things where, like, it's an addition. It is kind of useful, but the cost is so high. It's like, by turn four, like, many, many of the major plays have already been made or whatnot. So turn four can usually make or break the decision of who's winning that game. So it might be a bit too late to be playing that unless you've got some kind of ramp. But usually red and dark don't have any form of ramp or whatever. So we'll just need to wait and see how that goes. Next up, we've got Cryptid Tenacious Fire. A two-drop dark and fire is a 600-500. Uh, it's a beast, and it has first strike. Whenever this card deals damage to your opponent, remove the top card of your opponent's deck from the game. Which is a bit more helpful for Lapis, in all honesty, because um, this one is not an enter effect. It's just whenever it deals damage to your opponent, which is very nice. So, again, again, you'd probably try and coax your opponent to block with stuff, or whatever. And then, once they've, like, totally tapped out, or whatever, then you can just, like, sneak in with this card and just, like, you know like nibble at them with the jaws of this tenacious fiery beast and whatnot i also like the little quote at the bottom there where it's like time to settle an old family affair says gil lapis as he like cackles from the background and finally we have the swirling demon dimension a chant which has quick cast it is a fire and dark and void quick cast 
Basically, you just remove a target resonator from the game. That's as simple as that. So I'm guessing that would be pretty essential if you are running Lapis and whatnot because, you know, you want, it is kind of the, the problem is, is that it costs three. So not as speedy or as effective, I feel like, because, you know, you're, you're really not going to get access to it until like turn three unless you use Energize like a turn early or whatnot. But again, if you're going to be removing stuff that early in the game, is it really worth it or whatever? I guess it depends. Maybe you've got, maybe they've got Abdul and you just really want to get rid of it. So, eh, it's like, I'm just like, mm. Not too sure exactly how to feel about Lapis and his mechanic. I mean, it does seem interesting. Like I said before with Melium, it does seem interesting. Not sure if I would personally play it. I would have to see what other support they come with before I decide whether I would play it or not. But it is interesting to see them introducing a couple of new mechanics and whatnot. So... Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little discussion for my uh, opinions and whatnot on the new RDE uh, reveals and spoilers and whatnot. Let me know in the comments down below if you like Lapis' gimmick, if you think you would build him, what do you think of Valentina taking Shion's body now? It's, it just seems like she's never going to die. At this rate we're going to have a Valentina cluster and she's going to be the one that survives because obviously... Jordan really likes Valentina, so maybe maybe she's going to be the one who lives. But who knows? Well, maybe we'll finally see her defeated at some point, maybe in L4 or whatever when that comes around. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, make sure to leave a comment below if you have any thoughts about these spoilers before. Also, uh, be sure to check out my 400 subscriber giveaway. I'm still running it now. That's running until the end of the month. So you've got until the end of February to um, take part in it. But just to make sure you subscribe to me and you comment in that video, which I'll have in the description below and whatnot. And potentially, if I have at least 20 comments, then I will be giving away two playmats instead of one. So two lucky people will be able to win some playmats and whatnot, which is very, very nice. And then be sure to check out my Patreon if you're interested in becoming a patron. I'm, I'm doing like different tiers and whatnot. So like the lowest tier I think is $1 and that's like for shoutouts and whatnot. And then the other tiers are like you can get free artwork from me. You can request artwork and stuff. You I think another tier is that you get to request a video topic for at least once a month and whatnot. And then I think there's like a higher tier and everything where I actually send you some artwork of mine uh, that you get to pick and whatnot as long as you're comfortable uh, with me sending you stuff and whatnot. So those are all the tiers and whatnot if you want to check that check it out for yourself whatever you get to see a bit more description then you can check it out in my description below obviously and i hope you all have a lovely day and i will see all you guys later